What's up, YouTube? Um, I apologize that I have been off the radar. I got into it, made a couple videos, and just got super busy this spring. I had a lot of stuff to do, and I'm back at it now. I'm back on the horse, and I'm gonna try to be putting out at least a video a week. Uh, I hired a buddy, his name's Jackson. He's gonna be fishing on, or he's gonna be on a lot of my guide trips that I'm running this summer, as well as just with me pretty much every day I'm on the boat filming. Right before I stopped, I started a, what I was going to do was a three-part series of um, a three-part series consisting of the three baits I like to use um, in dirty water conditions. Summertime, the water usually gets a little dirtier, and they're just three good search baits for the most part. Um, doesn't necessarily have to be dirty, but um, dirty water search bait, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to go through my three favorites. So the first one I did was. Chatter baits, talked all about chatter baits, my favorite chatter baits, why I liked using chatter baits, why fish really key in on chatter baits. And today I'm gonna to talk about uh, probably the most notorious um, redfish bait of all, and that is the gold spoon. I'm gonna run, I gotta pick my dog up, and then I gotta to run to the car wash and spray the boat off. I didn't, didn't wash it yesterday. Alright, I'm gonna go grab cram real quick. I'll be right back. Ugh. Can't forget my wallet. I'll leave a truck around. What's up everybody? Thank you for tuning back into Judd Brock Fishing. So right before um, I stopped, I started what I was gonna do was a three part series talking about my three favorite baits for redfish in dirty water. And the first one was on chatter baits, kind of went over how, how much I love chatter baits and how I fished them and which chatter baits I like to use. And today I'm gonna go over probably the most notorious redfish bait and that is the spoon. I fish mostly gold spoons. I've got a few different colors. Most of mine are gold, but here I've got a silver one and then three gold ones. And I really only fish two different types of spoon, both made by Johnson. Um, there's a lot of people that make spoons and they're all, they're all great. There's really nothing to it. It's, you can make a spoon yourself pretty easily. So I'm gonna go over first what I throw the most often and that is the silver minnow. It's called the silver minnow, but it comes in a lot of different colors. Like I said, I'm usually fishing the gold. The reason I like this, and this is the first type of spoon I ever started fishing for redfish, is because of how weedless it is. It's got this metal weed guard here. Um, that will get bent down, but you can very easily just fold it back up. And I like to set that weed guard just like a touch above the hook point. Um, and so that just allows it to come through everything. I fish this in open water, but I'm typically throwing this around the edges of grass. And so when that tide gets up high and it's hard to see fish, and you've got those little edges of, of flooded grass, those fish will push up and lay in there. And they're real hard to see, even if the water's clean, it's hard to see those fish in there because they're sitting still in that grass and they've got all this cover on them. With this gold spoon, you can throw it far past where you think those fish are sitting and it'll just slide right through the grass really well without hanging up. I mean, every once in a while you're gonna hang the grass, but this is probably just about as weedless as it gets. So I'm fishing the silver minnow if I'm fishing around grass and cover. The second spoon I'll throw, um, and really the only other spoon I'll throw is the, is the shutter spoon by Johnson. But because it's a little bit shorter and more compact, um, it's, it feels heavier and you can actually throw it a lot further than this one here. It catches the wind a little bit less. And I, I like this because of that, the distance you can get with it and because you've got this, um, this split ring with like an articulating hook off the back. I feel like you miss a few less fish here. Um, and sometimes I'll put single J hooks off the back and other times I'll fish the treble hook off the back. But I'm throwing this in open water, I'm throwing this a lot more in Louisiana when I'm searching for redfish, casting it way out off points and on deep edges. Um, the nice thing about both of these spoons is how shiny they are. They attract fish from a, from a long way away and the wobble they create in the water, the fish can also feel that too. 
Um, it's, it creates quite a vibration in the water. And you can feel it in your rod tip as you're reeling too. You can feel that spoon shaking back and forth. But like I said, lots of companies make spoons. They're all great. If you don't have spoons on the boat with you for redfish, then you are definitely missing out. Um, I throw these a lot when I'm not fly fishing and they really, really pay off. It's a great search bait and uh, it's a great bait to have in your arsenal. So go pick up some spoons. Spoons are relatively cheap. I'd say around four to five bucks, kind of depending upon where you're getting them and uh, they're just great to have. So I hope that you can use some spoons this summer if you haven't already in the past and, and catch yourself a lot more redfish. Uh, until next video, peace.